All right, today we're talking about the Army Virtual Desktop. We're gonna talk about it in the most simplified terms. We're gonna start out real easy for all comprehension levels. We're gonna get you with the quick setup so you could jump right to doing things like checking your email. And then we're gonna get a little bit more in depth, talk about what is the virtual desktop, what can you do with it, and what are the benefits of having it. All right, so we're gonna start with this onboarding page. I'm gonna put the link in the description, but basically it has the most common steps here, which is onboarding. This is basically where you're just asking for requesting access to the virtual desktop. All right, so you're gonna hit yes, and then it's gonna send you an email with the link. That link is basically gonna take you right here to the setup, all right? So once it says you're good to go, you've been accepted, you can come back here or you can follow the email and go to setup. Here it's showing you all the devices that you could install the or access the virtual desktop with. But for the sake of this demonstration and the most likely scenario, you're gonna go with this, with this personal corporate devices. It's gonna be your own computer, all right? So here for instructions, it says to download the Microsoft Remote Desktop, click on this link. And here it's gonna have some information. You're just gonna scroll right here to the section that says download and install the remote desktop. You're gonna look for your operating system. Most likely your operating system is gonna be 64-bit, if not 32, but we're gonna go with 64. It's gonna download the file to install. All right. If you have, you can open it right from here. If you happen to lose it or close this browser, it's going to be in your downloads folder, but we're just going to run it from here. All right. And you're just going to follow all the standard steps. So, or the default steps. So hit next, accept the terms. Next, you're installing it just for you. If you have multiple profiles, we're just going to go with the default. All right. So install just for you. So it may ask you this if you want to subscribe to the managed apps. So you can just click subscribe. I have to click subscribe with URL for demonstration purposes because I already set this desktop up and I uninstalled it so I could reinstall it just to demonstrate to you. But regardless, you're going to use your army email. Then you're going to sign in with your CAC. Okay, so now we have the remote desktops visible to us. All right, so it's going to say Arizona, Virginia. I don't know if these are VPNs or this is where the actual data centers are. Generally with the VPN, you want to pick the location that's closer to you. I don't think it's actually going to matter in this instance. So we're just going to go with Arizona. So it's connecting to the desktop now. You're gonna sign in once again. Allow it access. Hit okay. and we're in. Say this is your first time in and it's a fresh layout and you just want to say, check your email, right? At first it's gonna look blank like this, but for email, we have been using Outlook. Even the enterprise website was 
uh, application for Outlook. All right, so Outlook is in here. Outlook is what we're gonna use to check our email. So you could go in the search bar, just type in Outlook. All right, what I'm gonna do is right click on this and pin to taskbar. So every time we open this, we could just open it like this. And now we're in our email. You can see this is the email that had been sent to me when we checked that onboarding link. All right, and there's other apps you're gonna that are installed in here already that you're gonna use regularly. Say you wanna use like PowerPoint, right? Your PowerPoint Ranger, pin the taskbar. Say, let's see, do they have Adobe? Acrobat right here, right? Instead of searching for it every single time, we're just gonna pin it to a taskbar. And you can do that with every app. So then you're gonna have all your apps right here. So every time you log in, they're already chilling right there. Okay. So that's just the basics to get you up and running. So we're gonna talk about what is a virtual desktop? What did I just install on my computer? All right, so the easiest way to describe it or the easiest way to think about it is it's like a computer within a computer. Really what it is is a computer that's offsite. You operate it from your device, your computer, you access it via the internet, all right? So typically your computer has several components, CPU, which is the brain, a memory, and the apps and the programs that you're using on there. It's all in your office or your home. You can see it, it's within reach. You can see everything that's on the screen. With the virtual desktop, you're accessing a computer that's somewhere else. It's at a data center, it's on a supercomputer, whatever you wanna call it, the cloud, okay? So it has its own dedicated CPU, it's RAM, it's own apps, but you can see the interface and you can in input with your mouse and keyboard from your own personal computer, all right? And you have license to access that piece of hardware and those applications that are installed on the virtual computer. So essentially the army has given everybody their own government computer, all right? With its own operating systems, which is Windows, right? It's loaded with the Office, the Microsoft Office suite and modern computer specs. So is it a good thing? Is it a bad thing? Is this just another change that we're gonna dread? In my opinion, it's a very good thing. This is a win for everybody in the army. This is modern technology. This is not something that's complete. It's new to the army, but it's not completely new. People in the civilian world and um, jobs and corporations have been using this kind of technology for a while, and we're just now getting on board with it. All right, so what are some of the benefits? Well, first of all, it's a separate system. Let me let me just give, let me just show you right here. All right. So this is showing that you're on the Army desktop. This is showing your internet connection. But like I said, it's you could think of it almost like a computer within a computer, all right? This is the virtual desktop that I'm resizing and moving around, right? And this is my own normal desktop. Okay, so here, if I click off on this screen, this is my personal computer. This is my apps right here. These are my files. You see I got gaming stuff, I got editing stuff, I got entertainment stuff, I got different browsers, all that, all right? Now when I'm in here, I'm in the virtual desktop. It's a completely different system. Let's look at what they have in here. Now it says Sergeant. Now it has their apps, which is much you know, more limited. So it's a completely separate system. So first of all, since it's offsite, it's at a data center somewhere else in the desert, probably. You can't lose your work. Your work is stored on here. It's on separate hardware. All right. So unless you delete it, you're not going to lose that work. Everything that's stored on my local computer, on my local hardware, if my computer were to blow up, catch on fire, throw bleach on it, I would lose that data that's lo here locally on my personal computer but I wouldn't lose the data that's on the virtual desktop. 
MK Plus. These virtual desktops, these systems, the companies that the, that own the servers that these are stored on, they back them up regularly, daily at least. All right, so if you were to, for whatever reason, lose your data, it's backed up. Okay, I don't know how good you guys are at backing up your normal personal data. I'm not very good at it. They're good at it. Okay, so also it has modern components, meaning the hardware that is being used off-site is updated regularly. I'll give you an example here. So this is my system here. It's showing I'm on Windows 11 Pro. I have a AMD Ryzen 5 processor with 32 gigs of RAM. Okay. Now let's look at this system it has its own software or I'm sorry, its own hardware and software. This one has a AMD 64 core processor with 64 gigabytes of RAM. So it's hard to compare apples to apples, but this computer is no slouch. All right. So similar to how if you have a phone carrier and you pay for a service where they give you the newest, latest iPhone every year, it's like that. They constantly keep up with the hard. Their, your data on there will stay the same and it will it'll be unchanged. But the hardware that this is working off of off site remotely is updated regularly. So you're always going to have the latest and greatest, the, the latest close to the greatest hardware that you're working off of. All right. So you know how normally if you're working on a computer that's on post, uh, an older desktop is going to be slower, has a bad internet connection. God forbid you were to use, you know, a government laptop. Who knows how old that is, how many hands it's been on. It's slower. The drives don't work. You actually can't plug any drives to it. The internet connection is slow. Um, terrible experience. Well, this, you know, it's, you're working off the latest hardware. Also, they give you Microsoft 365. So for those of you that don't know, you used to use Microsoft Office products, right? You'd have Microsoft Office 2000, 2005, whatever the year was, and you were kind of stuck with that, right? Or one of the applications that come on there, like Word or PowerPoint or Excel or something. So now Microsoft has gone to a subscription-based service, Microsoft 365, where you pay a monthly subscription, you're, it's licensed to you specifically, and you have access to all the apps. All right. Well, here, the Army's paid for Microsoft 365, a license for everybody. So you have access to all of their apps. As far as storage, you got your OneDrive storage here. So it operates like local uh, filing system, right? But it's all in the cloud still. And one of the things that I like, okay, so here's here's the thing, right? The thing about these uh, Microsoft products, right, is that there's some limitations, like you cannot download these to your personal computer. Like if I was showing you this is connected, it's not connected to my personal computer, but it's on my personal computer. I can't save this to my local computer. It's only saving within the system, the, the army system, right? The virtual desktop environment. I don't know what you want to call it, right? But however, within that army, environment you are not only storing files but you could share files and you could also see other people's files so i don't know if this was done by design right but say like i'm trying to get some information about something right anything and i'm trying to go through my unit or i'm trying to look online for information on it right and i'm not too successful with that well i could search on here by keyword and it'll turn up any product that anybody has created or stored on these systems. So like, say for instance, I want to know about master driver training, right? Or, or GCSS, right? I'm gonna go just type in master driver and there's products here that other people at other units have created. Or if I wanna find out how to access GCSS, I can see a file here that says GCSS Army Access. Somebody created this document, shows you all the forms and all the classes you need to take pertaining to that. 
Now I can file save this locally to the virtual computer and this product is now mine. I can reference this anytime I want to. So to me, I think this was a big improvement on what we've been doing. Before getting on military computers was a pain. Desktops were old, connections were slow. Borrowing laptops was a pain. But now, as long as you have internet access and a device and credentials, you have a lot more access. And if you wanna log out, just click here on the close button and it will disconnect your remote session.